Okay, there's, um, there's four main modes. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> These two buttons right here, if you push them, you can access those modes. When you first turn it on, it'll come on, it'll come up in the main mode. I'm going to turn it off, take it out of sleep mode, just turn it on. <clears throat> and you'll see that it comes up with the version number and you see the label for the first mode and it comes right up into uh, the main mode. Let's see, you can see right at the top there is the frequency and then, uh, well I don't have a load on it, but you'll read the resistance and you'll read the reactance and then you'll read the SWR and SWR is labeled there. <clears throat> That's the main mode. Then you go to the next mode by holding both buttons down and it will go to the, whoops, I went too fast. <clears throat> it cycles back around until it gets to the main mode. You just let up off, let off, up on it. Then you press it again and it goes to the advanced one mode. And the, <clears throat> let me go back to the main mode here. Okay. I'll show you these modes a little bit later. Let me just talk about it. In the main mode, it'll display the first screen that comes up will display the frequency, like I was showing you. It displays the SWR in the upper corner, displays the resistance and the reactance. Now that's the mode that you're, you will pretty much always leave it on. You read the frequency you set it at, you check the SWR on your antenna, and then when you read the SWR, it'll tell you what the resistance is at that feed point right there at the connector and then it will give you the reactance of that feed point. If you go, if you press the mode button one time, you can measure the coax loss. You connect a piece of coax to it, it'll tell you what the loss is at whatever frequency you set it to. And then you press it again, you can put a resistor, I mean put a capacitor there, and you can measure the capacitance as in that given frequency. You can also take a piece of um, coax that's shorter than a quarter wavelength, and you can use that as a capacitor at a given frequency. So if you need a capacitor at a given frequency, take a piece of coax and take a pair of uh, cutters, diagonal cutter, and just keep cutting until you get the right frequency. <clears throat> um, and you can also do uh, the same thing uh, with inductance. You can measure the inductance. Um, and now both capacitance and inductance, what you can do is to measure the self-resonant frequency of an inductor. And I, I'll go over that too. Now, when you press it again, you'll go, you can get, the, uh, get into the frequency counter mode and you use that BNC connector uh, to read the uh, uh, frequency. All right, now, if, uh, if you press both buttons at the same time, you go into the advanced one mode. The advanced one mode will give you uh, the impedance in a different form, magnitude and phase, but it will also give you, you push the, uh, the gate button when you're in the magnitude and phase mode, then, and I'll show you that, uh, <clears throat> you'll get the series equivalent impedance, which is the, the way that you normally would look at antenna impedance, or then you push it again, you get the parallel equivalent. If you know one, you can get the other one, okay? You can also get return loss and reflection coefficient, which uh, these forms of SWR would, you probably won't use much. You can check resonance. Resonance is when the reactive part is equal to zero, okay? Um, then you can get match efficiency and you won't use that very much. Push both buttons again, you'll get um, a velocity factor setup. You input the velocity factor for a piece of coax, okay? And then you push it, uh, well you press um, both buttons to accept it, and then you go into a distant default mode. That's where you find shorts and open uh, in a coax line. Then you can get the line length of the coax in degrees, and also there's a calculator for that too. Then you can push both buttons again. You go into an advanced three mode that allows you to select different uh, characteristic impedances for different transmission lines. And you can make uh, uh, SWR measurements and coax losses. Anyway, those are the four main modes, so, okay? <clears throat> um, so basically, uh, all you have to do to use the 269 is how to push buttons, 
You know how to push buttons and turn knobs, and that's all there is to it. <laughs> okay. Well, what are some things you can do with it? Well, you can check antennas. You can tune up antenna tuners. Put this right on the input of an antenna tuner. Now I'm going to show you how to hook this up so it minimizes your chances of burning up to 269. Okay, you don't want to transmit into it. <coughs> uh, but, and I'm going to show you how to uh, check an antenna. Uh, Andrew brought this ham stick for <coughs> 10 meters, <coughs> and I'll show you how to uh, find the frequency where to have the, the lowest SWR. <coughs> And I'm going to show you, um, you know, when you um, put dipodes up, the way you do it is you go to the handbook and you find that equation. You all know this, 468 divided by F, right? Everybody knows that. So you put F in there, you put the frequency in there, and it tells you how long to cut the dipole. Okay, so you put the dipole up, and it ain't at the right frequency. <coughs> So you got to take the thing, and the worst, worst part of it is you cut it too short. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so you always want to make sure you cut that thing a little bit longer so you got a chance. Okay. <clears throat> but I, and then, you know, you cut it again, you cut a little bit off, you put it back up. <clears throat> okay, yeah, you cut it too long. So you cut a little bit off, and then you put it back up, still too long. So you got to cut a little bit off, and you keep on doing that. Because what always happens is you cut too much off. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> well, okay, but I'm going to show you how to do this. When you put it up one time, and then the next time you bring it down, you cut it to the right length, you put it up, and it works. And you can do that with this. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And I'm going to give you um, some... Uh, idea, at least one example, of what you can do with that series and parallel equivalent impedance. I'm going to show you how to check a ballon, and I'm going to show you that you can, if you got a little short vertical antenna, just a pole, you can take an inductor and put it in series with it and make it resonate at whatever frequency that you want to operate on and be able to talk to somebody. I'm going to show you how to measure capacitors and inductors and find out what the self-resonant frequency is. And I'm going to take a little tune circuit and show you how to measure series resonant frequencies, show you how to measure parallel resonant frequencies. And then I'm going to get a piece of coax and short it. And I can stick a pin in it, just put a short on the end and show you how to find where that short is. And I'm going to open it up and show you how to find where that open is. <clears throat> I'm going to measure the coax loss in that antenna, and I'm going to show you how to determine the velocity factor of a piece of coax. <clears throat> and um, I'm going to tell you how you can find the frequency of a quarter-wave stub and a half-wave stub. Crystals. Anybody know what a crystal is? <clears throat> okay, that was back in the old novice days when we used to use crystals, but you can use this to check crystals. <clears throat> and I'm going to tell you how, <clears throat> you know, sometimes you need a dummy load and it's not 50 ohm. You need some weird value of dummy loads. And you go out and buy all these MFJ dummy loads and you put them all in series and, and uh, parallel to try to make the value that you want. <clears throat> I mean, maybe I shouldn't tell you this so y'all can keep buying those dummy loads. <laughs> <clears throat> but um, I'm going to tell you how to use an antenna tuner. You put a 50 ohm dummy load on the end of it, not a 50 ohm dummy load. You take a little resistor, whatever value you want to, 300 ohms, 59 ohms, put it on the input of an antenna tuner, you tune it up, and you can make yourself a dummy load that's equal to that value resistor that I handle that amount of power. I'll tell you how to do that. <clears throat> okay, Ethernet cables. Uh, you know, these cables that plug into your computer. You have a, sometimes, you know, they have bad connections, and I'm going to tell you how you can uh, find out which one of them is bad. Okay, something else, I'm gonna, well, I'll tell you that later. <clears throat>